Good afternoon. Welcome to the uh, April the 7th, 2015, Glendale Housing Authority meeting. We are called to order at 3.05 p.m. So may we have uh, your roll call, please? Here. 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 May I, may I have please your order, uh, your, um, yeah, your report? Three twenty fourteen 2014 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. What is next, please? Next is approval of minutes of the meeting of Tuesday, March 10th, 2015. So moved. Second. Okay, is there a motion? If there is. And like for the all, all yes. Please. Authority members Devine? Yes. Friedman? Yes. Vinci? Yes. Frazian? Yes. Tanyan? Yes. Weaver? Karen and Jarian? Yes. Okay. What is next, please? Next is oral communication. No uh, cards were submitted, submitted for this portion of the meeting. Okay. So. There's only one Where's item the on the business agenda. Okay. Public hearing, Director of Community Development, regarding approval of Section 8 Public Housing Agency Plan for Fiscal Year 2015-16, authorizing submission of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Okay. May we have your, have your report, Mr. Uh, yes, ma'am. And uh, may it please the Board, uh, it is that uh, time of year where housing authorities have to, in compliance with HUD requirements, file their annual report. Uh, plan with uh, the uh, Housing Urban Development Department uh, as a streamlined uh, report. Uh, we're able to present it to you because we are a high achieving, once again, uh, housing authority. Our administrative analyst, uh, Veronica Lunn, is here to answer any questions you have regarding the very brief port report that is uh, attached to your staff report. So, uh, Veronica, if you want to come on up and open there. Thank you, Mr. Ochoa. Any questions? Good afternoon, Housing Authority Chairperson Ajarian, Housing Authority members, and city staff. My name is Veronica Lund, Administrative Analyst in the Community Development and Housing Department. Today, our agency is holding a public hearing for the submittal of a Section 8 uh, Public Housing Agency Annual Plan for Fiscal Year 2015 2016. I'm here to present the report. Um, however, if there are any questions regarding the Section 8 budget or the operations of the program, Peter Zovac and Joseph Rodarte will be happy to answer those questions. The, the Department of Housing and Urban Development requires that all public housing agencies submit a PHA annual plan. This plan provides interested parties with information on where to locate the agency's policies concerning the operations of the PHA and also reports to HUD any policy changes the PHA is implementing in the next fiscal year. Since our agency has been rated a high-performing agency by HUD, the agency is eligible to submit a streamlined plan. The deadline to submit this plan is April 16th. The submittal process involves meeting with the Resident Advisory Board to present the plan and obtain comments, holding a 45-day public comment period and holding a public hearing. Staff met with the Board on February 25th. The, meeting, the minutes of that meeting are included with the staff report and will be submitted along with the plan. Uh, this year, the plan includes a comment regarding the agency's continued effort to secure additional funding from HUD. Therefore, staff is recommending that the Housing Authority adopt a resolution authorizing the submittal of the Section 8 Public Housing Agency Annual Plan for fiscal year 2015-2016 to HUD. This concludes my presentation. I'll be answered a, happy to answer any questions you may have. Is is that a, a I know, yeah. Open yes, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is there any questions? I have some questions yes. about, if I may, uh, about the, the program, the Section 8 program. Okay. Uh, what is the status of, of the program right now, and um, how many um, vouchers do we have out there that are being are active, and why are we considered a high-performance um, city? Okay, I'll try to answer all of them. Uh, currently, we're authorized by HUD to have um, 1,592 vouchers. Okay, the status of the program, and uh, the program has been closed for many years. 
Um, our waiting list uh, currently has about 2,300 people on the waiting list. Are we still dealing with the five? Are we still? So we have we have, we have ranked people, right? Five points, four points, three points. Are we still working with the five pointers? At this, right? We yeah. haven't gone through them, right? Five hundred points. The, the point system for the waiting list, yes. But my question is, are we now admitting or giving vouchers to to those that have four points, or are we still on the five points? Actually, you want to handle that. We're at the uh, we're at the tail end of the five points. But keep in mind that people can update Luxury, their preference right. points at any point in time. So while we say today we're at the tail end of five, if a group of people update, then right. um, you could be back up to the upper five categories. In, um, so I think uh, the answer to the, to the question as to how many vouchers there are was something like 15, 30, 15, yeah, We're authorized to have 1,592. But then we have the portables, right? Another 1,500 or so? Yes, yeah, just under 1,500 ports. So a program of about 3,000 total. And of the 1,592 vouchers that we're allocated to have, uh, we only have about uh, 1,547 that are actually uh, able to be utilized and in circulation. The rest represents the gap in funding from HUD that we can't utilize. Oh, I'm sorry, so and how many are the gap? How many? 1547, so we have about uh, 1592, about 40, 45 vouchers that we can't use because of and insufficient funded. funding from HUD. And how much, how much money does that translate into, the 45? Uh, it would be, uh, it would require probably about another, just short of another million dollars to be able to utilize those over a 12 month period. So, just less than a month ago, I was in Washington, D.C., and uh, Council Member uh, Friedman was with me when we met with the HUD representatives. We, of course, we met also our Congressman Adam Schiff and also both uh, senatorial, the staff from both sen senators. And the issue of the HUD funding and Section 8 housing was a uh, priority for me. And um, the issue of the portables and, and changing the status of the portables to purely Glendale vouchers was also on the agenda because our congressman last year managed to add a language, add language to the omnibus spending bill, which would require HUD to come back with a report on portables and explain why it makes sense financially to keep a portable voucher portable when, I mean, the, the language doesn't go into that much detail, but it asks HUD to come back and sort of justify the existence of the portables. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's been more than a year the language has been in, inserted. Well, it's not more than a year. So it's, it's been about, what is it, four months, five, five months that that bill is in effect. And HUD has not come back with that report. So during our meeting with the HUD, we made the point that this you're required by law to submit a report, come back with a report. So we, we expect that you're going to come back with it. And of course, we were advised by our, by our congressman to do so which we did, and we're anticipating this report at some point. I guess we'll have to contact HUD and apply some more pressure, remind them that they're obligated by law to uh, come back and explain the whole portable situation. But if that were, were to happen, if the portables, or at least a portion thereof, were to become permanent Glendale vouchers, we would gain financially a lot, right? Which could translate into maybe Maybe, I don't know, that gap that we have that's not funded, maybe the additional 10% could be used towards that? I mean, what's... Well, as it is now, the ports, we get reimbursed 100% for every rental payment that we make on behalf of another agency on a port. So we would be made, we are made whole now as it is. Right. Where we really lose uh, in administering a port program is on the admin fee that we get to earn. Right. Uh, the portable program has an admin fee system that when someone does port out to another agency, that receiving agency gets to collect 80% of the admin fee that the original agency earns, and they keep 20%. And so that's that, huge, right? Yes, I mean, that's a big difference, because the, the original agency that ports a client out, beyond just the action of porting that person out on an annual basis, nothing. they don't do anything. Um, That's why it makes no sense for them to collect, to continue to collecting continue year, to collect over the 20% year over year, year. Yeah. has been a concern that we've had for uh, a long number of years that we've been bringing up to them. 
So we've asked them to address that, and the, as you mentioned, Congressman Schiff has been very supportive in trying to get HUD on record to take a look at the admin fee. In addition, when you have a voucher, the admin fee that you earn on a voucher is placed in one category, and they call it column A. Mm -hmm. For some reason, HUD seems to think that when you have a port admin fee that's being earned, for some reason, it's worth less on an admin fee basis. So my own voucher for Glendale, we get to earn $100 per household per month. But for some reason, HUD feels that a, a port is only worth $80 worth of work. And then on top of that, you get only 80% of that. So we've tried pointing out this issue to them as well, that there's this inconsistency um, beyond just the 80-20 rule. Yeah. I'll tell you honestly that uh, the, the, the meeting with the HUD staff, these questions that were posed to them, they had the you know, deer in the headlight kind of look. They're like, oh, okay, we'll check, note. We'll check, note, and we didn't get a single straight answer from them. Everything was like, we'll get back to you on that. Except for the one, the woman who represents us here in Los oh, Angeles, which, who... I'll let you do that one. Uh, ...basically said we sh that there's really no problem because we can just ask the city of Los Angeles Housing Authority... To give, to give us ...to give the vouchers back to us, um, <laughs> and that they would do so it. So that's between you no. and the city valet. Well, we didn't think so because they're collecting no. an administrative fee, so they're course, making money they on this, but that was their proposed solution. <laughs> And when I pressed her on it, I said, well, I, I understand that, but no municipality is going to give up on free money when they're not doing anything in return right. for it. She just did not want to grasp that basic concept. She kept saying, well, it's between you and the city valet. And she started getting aggressive, at which point I said, listen, no, we're, we're, you know, we're here to meet with staff. We're not here to argue about anything. And at that point, I understand uh, another agency's position more because what you're doing is you're saying you know we we have 1592 vouchers we only have five ports people that have moved out of glendale to live in another agency right and so that agency would be asking us and saying would you give up your port would you give up your voucher to us and instead of 1592 you now have 1591 i wouldn't want to lose that voucher for Glendale because at some point in time that person might come back to the city, sure. that person might turn in their voucher and then it does come back eventually and you can help someone else, else off the waiting list. So I can understand that position, but not on the, uh, the inequity of the uh, admin fee that you earn on a port. Okay, very well. So uh, Peter, there used to be things uh, when, when there was redevelopment called the city of industry funds where the city of industry refused to to spend any affordable housing money on their set-asides in their city. Mm -hmm. Are there any cities that are afforded vouchers which do not use them and do not want them? No, it's pretty oversubscribed. Okay. Certainly in the Southern California region, there might be other agencies uh, in other parts of the country that don't utilize their full allotment. How about La Cunada? Do they get any? They probably don't even. They don't get anything as a direct. They, theirs is administered and counted through the county system. I have a I have a question about um, availability of uh, units for affordable housing for for those at Section Eight that have vouchers. Mm -hmm. Do we have enough um, availability for all of them to um, get the housing, find the housing that they need, and if not, what are your plans in the future of of uh, perhaps making more available to them. We are seeing, if you recall, uh, sometime at the beginning of the summer, we finally were able to pull a few people off our waiting list, about 145, mm -hmm. after about a three-year freeze. We are seeing those finally uh, clients lease up. We had some clients that leased up at the very beginning after getting their voucher, some taking the full six-month um, timeline to lease up. Um, not all of them were on the longer end of the spectrum, so it gives us an indication that there is available uh, vacant units out there that can meet our criteria for payment. Um, but the flip side of asking for more vouchers and maybe getting a significant amount of more vouchers might be the actual inventory then that you have in the city. And so it, it's, it's, for now it seems sufficient. If we were to get a deluge of additional vouchers in the future, there might be a lot of people looking for a limited number of units um, to lease up. Uh, what we are trying to do is promote the program a little bit to our landlords. And so uh, a couple of staff members have developed a marketing campaign that they want to implement to landlords. First, thanking our existing landlords who are on our program uh, for their participation. 
and then um, trying to uh, market to uh, new landlords about the benefits of the Section 8 program and trying to get those units listed with us so that when we do have a voucher that's issued to somebody, we have referrals for them to go out and find units. I'd rather we had the deluge and then had to deal with the shortage of units than correct, correct. having no money and right. but, but no way. So can we say the, uh, the number of uh, five-pointers are uh, larger than the four or three or whatever? The, the number of uh, five-pointers are bigger than the others? Uh, most likely there were probably a larger group of fives than there are fours. As you go down in the preference points, they do have to have, they are smaller buckets of, of, of people in the points. Amen. But um, we're towards the bottom of the fives. So uh, hopefully if we start to issue vouchers again soon, uh, we might start to dip into the fours. But with over 2,300 people still on the waiting list, it'll, it'll be about five to six years, I think, before you really start to even consider opening up the waiting list again. It'll take time to, took a lot of time to go from 2001, over 12,000 households applied to get to now. And it seems like it's just gonna be a little bit longer. No questions? No, I, um, okay. I'll, if there are no other comments, I'll move 6A1. We need to close that. Uh, I'll I close need to, the session. Yeah, no. Uh, we need to close the oral communications. I'll close the public hearing. Public hearing, I mean, yeah. Is my motion? Now uh, you can make it. Now I yeah. move section or uh, six A one. Second. Okay. I'll second that. Thank you. Authority members, Devine. Yes. Friedman. Yes. Vinci. Yes. Razian. Yes. Lanyan. Yes. Weaver. Aye. Chair Najarian. Yes. What is next, please? Authority member and staff comments. I have, a, I have something to say. Since today is the election day for Glen, in Glendale, so I'm coming from the polls. I'm working at the polls, and out of 2,200, the place I'm working at, uh, we had just 100 voters. Please get up and go vote. Please be active in your civic duty. Thank you. I can just add to that. Um, yeah, I was uh, much earlier on. I was at my, at my precinct at Brent Library, and uh, it seemed like no one was there. So very concerning. And uh, I went down to the Boy Scouts uh, voting place also, in the Boy Scouts of America, on Grand View, and that was pretty empty as well. So I want to encourage everyone to go out there and vote. Thank you. Any new business agenda? No. Oh. Move to adjourn. Second. Second.